Well, hello. Welcome back. It's Pauline from PQW again. And I'm here to show you how to make our beautiful Kabbalah bags. As you can see, we've got a couple of samples here on the table. Beautiful new pattern that we've released for you. These bags can be made any size that you wish to. Now, I've made both of mine out of my stash, but they are made of two and a half inch wide strips. So a jelly roll pack would be absolutely brilliant for these. You wouldn't use a full jelly roll. You'd uh, pack, you'd probably be able to get a couple of bags out of one um, complete jelly roll. But I just decided I needed to use up some of my fabric from my stash. So I just cut lots of two and a half inch wide strips. And this one here, I used, um, a contrast color just to add to the top then use completely different fabrics on the handles just to build it up and make it look a bit funky and trendy there's no rules you just make it to whatever you want but I just want to go through and show you some of the tools that I've used to make the construction of these bags very very easy obviously there is the pattern that we have now you can make the um, handles of these bags like the the, the body of the bag you can make them any size you want it's all going to start from the base the base is going to give you the size that the bag's going to turn out but we'll talk about that a, a bit more in a moment with the handles I've got them well padded so that they're not going to be um, too stiff and hard over your shoulder they're very very strong these are brilliant bags to take when you go grocery shopping or just when you go normal shopping go to the beach they pack down, if you're traveling, they pack down to be absolutely nothing. You can throw them in and out of the washing machine. They wash beautifully. So that's just a little bit on the bag. We'll move the pattern out of the road. Now the tools that I like to use to get this constructed. I do use a good quality needles, the titanium top stitch needle size 80. They keep their point so much sharper for so much longer compared to a regular needle. They will penetrate through the thickness that we're going to create, particularly when we're putting the handles on. We've got a lot of layers to go through, so this works brilliantly. I use the tailor's awl, which I'll be demonstrating to you when we go to the machine and we start to make the cord for the bags. I'm going to be using the Jelly Roll Sasha tool, this one here, to make my cord. Um, a lot of people own these, but these are particularly designed to help you at the sewing machine make the cord. So we'll be using those. I'll be introducing you to our bag strappers. These are for making the handles, which you can make the handles any size you want. And we'll show you a few um, how to use those. They're very, very easy to use. And then I use the sew slip mat on the bed of the machine to allow the um, bag, as you construct it and as you build up the sides, you don't want to be pulling and shoving or stretching. This over the bed of the machine will help you glide the fabric through beautifully. You'll get no stretching, you'll have no pressure on yourself and you'll just be able to pivot the fabric cord around to construct the bag. I use the Roxanne glue based it very important part of it because when we get the base of the bag started we need to glue it first so we don't get our fingers too close to the needle. Now the other thing I use um, is the Hobbs heirloom double-sided fusible pre-cut wadding. Now this is brilliant because this is what's going to restrict the stretching of the bag. It's going to make it so easy for you. Pre-cut, ready for you to go. Then we have a choice of what foot is going to be best on the machine. I personally prefer to use an open toe foot on my machine so I can see exactly where I'm stitching, particularly when I do the zigzagging. Some people prefer to use the stitch in the ditch foot. It's up to you which is the best foot for you and your machine and which one you can handle the best. So that's just a, few, a little bit about our tools. Now what we need to do is to get started, if you're going to cut your fabric yourself um, in the pattern it'll give you a little guide of how many strips you'll need to cut, but all your strips are cut two and a half inches wide. If you're using a jelly roll they will be cut two and a half inches wide. Now we need to join those um, strips together on a 45 degree angle, on the angle like such. 
45, trim it back to a quarter inch seam, press the seam so all the seams are going in one direction. Then lay your pre-cut wadding out on the ironing surface and you will have to, it's stuck together so you'll have to pull it apart. Now don't worry about um, the word fusible when you're using this, it's a very light fuse. If I put the iron on it, nothing's sticking to my iron. It's not going to stick to my ironing surface. But if you're worried about your ironing surface, put something down on your ironing surface for, first, but I've never had anything stick to my ironing surface. What we're going to do now is lay this down. So lay, it, lay the wadding out as we have. Have a little bit of fabric hanging over the end because we need to tuck that in. Then we just simply, with our hot dry iron, slowly press. Now just go a lot right the way through and press the whole lot of the strips onto the fabric. Then when you've got that done, we're ready to start getting it all together. But a little thing that we need to do to start with, when we start constructing the base of the bag and we start winding around that big oval, we don't want bulk where we start. So my little tip here is to fold it in half, just press that little bit. Then we're going to grade about three inches off this. So we're just going to use our scissors and take it's about half an inch I'm taking off here. So you can see how I've tapered that. Then we're going to fold the end in and press. Now you'll do this at the end of your strip also. So the start and the end you need to taper it. Then we're going to fold each end in and press about four or five inches. Now if it's opening up or if you're using other wadding that you're cutting, just a normal wadding, you may need to use the Roxanne glue basted and put little dots of glue to hold that and press. And don't, the glue is totally water soluble so when you wash your bag um, it will wash out. So now we're going to put it into the Jelly Roll Sasher tool up and back down. We're going to pull this through. Now what we're going to do next is we'll go to the machine and set up our machine with a straight stitch. I'm going to use the open toe foot. I'm going to move my needle over so I'm going to be able to stitch a quarter of an inch seam. And as we're sewing, this tool is going to do all the folding for you. If we didn't use the tool, we'd have to stand at our ironing board and iron all of this in, into thirds like so then we'd have to roll it over and pin it or clip it. And that can take an awful long time. But using this tool at the machine, it's going to be able to do all the folding for us as we sew. So let's go to the sewing machine and set it up and make our cord. Then we'll show you how to make the base of the bag and start building the sides up. Very, very simple steps to this project. So we've got the machine set up with the sew slip mat and you notice I've got a little piece of fabric here. That's my starter piece. I sew onto it first and then I fold the strip in half, hold it with the awl, hold onto the starter piece and that'll help me feed it through at the beginning. Otherwise the feed dogs can't get traction on that little narrow piece. So as we get down closer to our Jelly Roll Sasha tool, we're going to stop. Make sure your needle's in the down position. Increase your stitch length. You want a little bit bigger stitch than what you would normally um, stitch with. Then we're going to fold these sides in and grab hold of the tool and pull it down. Now we fold over. Use the awl, it will help you, and we just keep sewing. Just keep going till you make all of this cord. It's a very easy process, it'll just take you time. Stop when you get close to the tool, fold in, pull down, and sew. 
Once again, stop, fold, pull, and sew. So just keep going until you get the whole lot of the cord stitched up and then you're ready to start constructing the base of the bag. So we're going to go back to my work table now and show you how to get that started. And then we'll come back to the machine and start the stitching process, which is a zigzag stitch, which is very easy. And I want to just quickly make a base of a small bag for you and show you how to build the sides up. Then all we've got left to do to show you is how to make the handles. So let's go back to the work table. When you get all your cord um, made, wrap it into a ball because it's just going to get tangled up everywhere if you don't. Now when we start making the base, this is where you need to decide how big it needs to be. But a few suggestions, and I've got this base already started just to give you an indication. But when we lay this down and start coming around these curves, these first couple of curves get quite difficult at your machine for the reason is the needle could is very close to your fingers. So I don't like to do that. I don't want to put anybody at risk. So I suggest strongly that you put little dabs of glue along the edge of your fabric for the first couple of rounds. You don't need it for too far. Once you get it glued there, just set it with a hot iron. Set the glue. Remember the glue won't get on your iron. It doesn't make a mess. Now when we start stitching, we don't have to put our fingers anywhere near that, we just have to hold it. So we're going to go to the machine, we're going to have, I'm going to use the open toe foot, but the foot that you use is your choice. And I'm going to set my machine onto a zigzag, open the width and the length a bit so you get a nice um, even zigzag. So let's hopefully you can see this zigzag here nice and close. It needs to catch both sides of the cord to pull them together. You don't want it too wide and you definitely don't want it too close because you'll be stitching forever. So we're going to go to the machine. I'm going to do a couple of rounds here to show you the stitching for the base. Then I'm just going to start building up the sides. So I would only be making a tiny little bag out of this um, amount of cord I've got made here. But I just want to show you how to build the side of the bag up so that you get the depth that you want for the bag that you're making. So come back to the machine and join me. Don't forget to put the slippery mat on the machine. Have that on there for the whole process of making this, this bag. Because you, you don't want to be having to struggle and turn this, you just want it to glide. So we've got the machine set on the zigzag, I've got the open toe foot on, you've got your roll here. Put the roll over your shoulder into a basket behind you. Now we want to hold the cord between our thumb and finger. If you try to hold it like this, you're going to stretch it too much around the corner and your bag will go all whoopy on you and you don't want that to happen. So let it rest between your thumb and finger. Keep your left hand on your fabric and we just let it glide through. Now, as we come around this corner, please don't stretch that cord. Just let it sit there just pivot it around and you can see if I didn't have this mat on the machine I'd be really pushing it through. The mat is what really helps me um, make this so easy to do. The zigzags catching each side of the cord. I'm not stretching the cord at all. So just keep stitching like that till you get the base as big as you want. Now I'm going to now start to build up the sides simply by lifting, putting my hand under the piece that I've already stitched. And I'm just going to keep holding it up as I stitch. Now the gentler you go up with it, the wider the bag will get. So if you want it to be a nice deep bag, hold it up straight away. But that's all we have to do to get the shape of the side of the bag. And as the bag grows, it'll start to sit over the top of your machine. You'll still be able to see what you're doing.
And it's fun to do. There's nothing hard about it. Now, if you don't have a good needle in your machine, you can expect to skip stitches. That's why I suggest the titanium top stitch needles. They are brilliant. Just keep going to get the whole sides done. And you can see now how that's starting to take its shape. Just keep on going, holding it up tight against the side of the machine. And when you get to the end, you're just going to taper it off at the end um, because we've tapered the start and the big end. Remember when we went and got the cord started, we tapered off the ends and that'll just run it in onto itself. And you can see now we've got that great shape starting to go. So you just continue going to get it to the size you want. I just wanted to show you the, um, the body of the bag that we were making at the machine just so you get an idea of just by holding it up you can see that it's building the sides up so this this one here would make a lovely little basket for a little girl if I keep going around and around and building it up higher and higher to the depth that you want it to be then all you've got to do is put handles on it so talking about handles we're just going to show you how I make the handles or the straps or whatever you like to call them you know, there's lots of pre-made handles that you can buy, but I love to make the fabric ones. So what I'm going to do is use our bag strapper set here, and I'm going to use the um, two inch one and the one inch one to make some straps for you. So what we're going to do is you cut your fabric double the measurement of the tool that we're going to use. We then put some wadding inside so that it's nice, got nice body to it. I've just cut um, scraps of my Hobbs pre-cut fusible batting, put it down and just press. So you'd make your handles as long as what you want. Um, you know, some people like to carry their bag over their shoulder. Some like to just hold the handle. I'm just going to cut this bit of wadding off. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put it through the tool. So we've cut it four inches wide. We're going to fold the ends in till they meet. And we're going to put it into the... And you can see why the splits are so wide here. And it is the green ones that you need because we've had to make these splits very wide to accommodate all of this bulk. I just put it through. And then we pin into the ironing surface. And then all we're going to do is fold this over and press with the iron. It is a bit hard to push through because we've got the bulk there, so just tap with the iron as you go. Move the pin down. So if you're on your big ironing board, this is much easier, and your big iron. Just press it down. Just keep moving it down till you get the whole strip done. Then we're going to make another strip and we're going to put the other strip over the top of this uh, raw edge here. But I'm not going to put wadding in this. If you want your handles to be really, really um, quite firm and quite strong, you could cut a piece of wadding and put in this one. This one's cut two inches wide. We'll fold it in and in till it meets. And we're going to put it through the one inch tool, up and over. And you'll see this one's much easier to iron because I haven't got the thickness of the wadding in there. But still and all the other one wasn't too hard to iron. I just needed to tap the tool with the iron as I went. So just move your pin. Now once we get that done, the next step's really, really easy. What I do is I get the Roxanne glue and just put little drops of glue down. Just 
pull this off. And we're going to put this over the top of that raw edge. Look at that, magic. So go all the way down and glue it. Once you get it all glued, just set it with the iron. And you know, in the, in the set, you've got three different sizes. So you can make any combination you want um, to decorate your handles up however you want. Now, once you get that all glued on, go to your machine and stitch really close on each edge with a contrast thread, with a matching thread, whatever you'd like to do. Very, very simple process. Then once we're going to put these onto the bag, I just turn this back and I do put a bit of glue underneath here to make it really easy because I find it's very hard to get pins through all of this bulk. So glue and press. Now you're ready to come to your bag and stitch this on. So just looking at this bag here, you can have this distance from here to here, whatever size you want. You'll, you know, you'll need to measure yourself and work all of that out. I've just done the two layers. You can see where I've done the stitching on either side. I've tucked the ends in under, and then I've stitched around the edge and then put a, stitched across in the middle. It's just so I've got these really, really secure so they won't pull away. You've got gorgeous handles. Look at that, bags made. Very, very simple. This one here, I wanted to add a little feature to it, so I've put some D-rings on the end. And I just got these at a local quilt shop. You find them everywhere because there's so many beautiful bags out there. But look at that, isn't it gorgeous? The two contrast colours is beautiful. And you've got the two different colours um, on the handles there. So and it's really, really lovely to go shopping with these. They fit your body beautifully. They really are lovely. And don't forget, you can squish them up and put them in your suitcase if you're traveling. Take them to the beach, make them for Christmas gifts, make them for birthday gifts, whatever you would like to. Now, just the tools that helped us um, construct this. We had the pre-cut fusible batting. We used the jelly roll sasha tool. We used the bag strapper sasha tools. We used the Roxanne glue basted the wonderful titanium top stitch needles and all, and the sew slip mat. And then of course the jelly roll, all your scraps of fabric. So I hope you really enjoy constructing some brilliant bags for yourself. And I know your friends would love one. So make one for your friends. And let's all be happy with our shopping bags and have a great time stitching. So go to our website, www.pqw.com.au have a look around make yourself a bundle of all the tools that you'll need to construct these bags and do subscribe to our website and also subscribe to our youtube channel because we would love for you to subscribe hit the bell so next time we've got some more interesting lessons for you we can notify you. Well, there you go. That is the Kabbalah bag from PQW. Now I'm off shopping. See you next time. Bye.